Hello, and welcome to World Bank Live. My name is Jay So, the manager of the World Bank's Water and Sanitation Program. Today, we're here with the executive director of UNICEF, Anthony Lake, uh, to talk about your excellent questions on the impact of poverty on children and UNICEF's perspective. Mr. Lake, thank you for coming. Thank you, Jay. Um, one of the first questions that came from one of our viewers is that how can somebody who lives in North America understand really the plight of childhood hunger in Africa? First of all, let me say how difficult it is for a former professor to do five questions in five minutes, but I'll try. Uh, I think that it is, of course, very difficult to understand, uh, but it's very important that we try. And let me suggest that we look at it in a different way. There are a million to a million and a half children in the Sahelian region now facing severe acute malnutrition in imminent peril of dying. The world isn't paying much attention, uh, and it needs to, because I think the world is tired of dealing with uh, children and dying once again in Africa. That's because we look on them as objects of pity. I'm just back from Chad. I've seen children and their families struggling courageously against long odds, odds that situations we cannot imagine uh, simply to survive. They don't deserve simply our pity and our charity because you get tired of that. They deserve our support for their courageous struggle. And we have to remember that every one of those million children is a little child, not a statistic, whose whole future hangs in the balance. You've handled childhood stunting as really one of your priorities during your three-year mm -hmm. tenure at UNICEF. Could you tell us how is, what is stunting and how is that related to this issue? Almost nobody's ever heard of stunting. Uh, and I think if the Sahel is a visible crisis that the world could see if it wanted to look more, stunting is an invisible crisis. Stunting is the irreversible effect on a child who doesn't get the proper nutrition in the first thousand days of that child's life, including in pregnancy. It is irreversible. And what happens if you're stunted is that you're not only physically a little shorter, but your brain never develops properly. And that means your cognitive ability through the rest of your life is impaired. This is an individual tragedy for 180 million children around the world, 180 million. It is also, I think, one of the most under-recognized drags on development in the world, and it's not that expensive or that difficult to deal with. So I would look on it rather than as a huge challenge, which it is, it's a huge opportunity for all of us to make a real difference. Mm. What about the role of Plumpy Nut and other nutritional programs? Mm -hmm. Can that address this stunting issue? It can, but Plumpy Nut is mostly for the children who are suffering severe acute malnutrition, uh, who are so thin and so emaciated they literally uh, could soon die. Plumpy Nut is a therapeutic food. Luckily, it's one that is not terribly expensive, that uh, doesn't need to be refrigerated. It's highly nutritious. Uh, we can keep working on producing more and more of it locally, uh, and we can use it then to save children's lives just before they die, uh, which is a great thing. Better would be to deal with malnutrition before it gets to that extent uh, and provide children with more nutritious foods uh, and especially breastfeeding, uh, which can help head off stunting as well. Mm. One of the activities that you'll be participating at the spring meetings mm -hmm. is sanitation and water for all. What is the linkage between sanitation and nutrition? I should be interviewing you on this question since you're a great expert on this uh, and the World Bank is doing great work uh, on it, I might add. Sanitation is one of those issues uh, and water that cuts across all other issues and makes a huge difference. Uh, lack of sanitation, poor sanitation and simply poor habits, open defecation. Over a billion people in the world practice open defecation. That in turn, uh, bad habits, not washing hands, uh, etc open defecation, helps produce diarrhea. Diarrhea is one of the two biggest killers of children in the world. If it hasn't killed the child, then it can greatly inhibit progress. For example, uh, if a child is eating nutritious foods, they can be washed out by the diarrhea. If you give a child oral uh, polio vaccine, uh, the child can lose the benefit if that washes through uh, also. So sanitation 
uh, I'd say with nutrition is uh, one of the two uh, biggest under-addressed uh, development issues that we face. Mm. It seems that many of these interventions should be done long before children get to school, and there are so many programs that address uh, these issues during school. So mm -hmm. what, what, sh what is UNICEF's perspective on what should be done when? Well, I think UNICEF and the World Bank and many others are increasingly concentrating on early childhood development. Uh, again, stunting occurs in the first thousand days of a child's life, and you have to address it then or it's irreversible. And by the way, that means that a child will both learn much less in school and earn much less uh, later. So we have to address uh, nutrition issues, especially, again, uh, breastfeeding uh, early in a child's life. More and more studies show that if you provide the child with stimulation of seeing images or reading to the child or whatever, that child is going to uh, develop uh, better later uh, in life as well. So that first magic thousand days is not only about nutrition, it's about almost everything in a child's uh, development. Thank you. You know, we're really only at the tip of those dozens of questions that have come from viewers all over the world. Uh, but we really thank you for taking your time and for UNICEF's leadership on this issue. And the World Bank's. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.